Hi everybody and welcome back to Plastic Models with the Regular Dude. And the IDF group build of Dragon's Magok 1 and 2 Battle Tank. So in the last episode, I had completed step 1. And uh, including all of this here. Step 2. I'm sorry, step 3. Um... I sanded these parts off, cut them off, in preparation for uh, joining the two hull halves together, the upper and the lower, which is actually step four, but I went ahead and did that before I added all these smaller parts here so I can work on the seam. So um, with that, I am going to be uh, I've already started sanding on this seam here so I'm going to take care of all the seams around this and then I will do the um, I will do the uh, cast texture on here to cover up where I cut those parts off and to blend in this now smooth seam with the texture of the rest of it so I'm going to work on that, and then once I do that, then I can move on to these uh, smaller parts on step three, and that'll complete um, up through step four, joining the two parts. Then I can move on to step five, which is, uh, there's two step fives, one for the Magok 1, one for the Magok 2. I'll be doing this one right here, which includes cutting up the fenders, but we'll get to that in a little while. All right, fast forward past everything because the kit is pretty much done and uh, the base coat applied. So, yeah, sorry, I really meant to uh, um, do a lot more. <sighs> kind of talking about the individual steps, but the kit was going so well, I just didn't do it so what I'm going to do so I'm just going to kind of go through the instructions here talking about what I did uh, any notations um, to consider so this whole section here the Magok 2 portion that all went together fine um, this uh, the rear um, storage rack whatever you want to call it um, just be really super careful when you're cutting it off the sprue uh, so as not to break anything so some really nice sharp um, cutters is a good idea but it went together perfectly um, I just started at one uh, end and worked my way down gluing parts as I went so that all, that all worked out really well um, the suspension parts, um, nothing really to note there. All that went together uh, nicely. Um, Gawk 1 I did not do, obviously. So we jump down to the 2. Now, uh, there is um, some cutting that needs to be done. But if you're careful, what you do is you flip the... Um, you flip the fender over and there's a natural cut line underneath so cut it from underneath um, and all I did was I used my uh, uh, exacto blade the back side of it and just scored 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 and it came right apart barely any sanding to do fit together really nicely and it is at a natural seam line so you don't have to worry about uh, you know anything looking funny so that went much easier than I thought it would so that that worked out um, the photo etch on this kit I have to say really makes sense and I enjoyed the photo etch on this kit um, a lot of times photo etch can be really fiddly and sometimes I think it is not necessary um, this part here and this part here they're l-shaped when you bend them there's a nice little groove that they just drop into place um, this little box here up fit real nice the two um, 
the holder for the shovel and for the uh, pick handle, I believe, uh, worked great. Um, some photo etch that I enjoyed working with for a change. Usually it can be very frustrating, but it worked out really well. Uh, tools are in a place. I'll be painting those uh, separately, and I will put those on later. Um, but all of the parts, the fenders, um, my suggestion would be, and what I did, is I glued this part here first because it's the most substantial part. This part that fits right here. I glued that in place. Then I went to the front, I glued that, I glued that. Then I moved back here and glued this one and this one. And it fit together nicely. I did that on both sides. Again, no problems. Uh, photo etch here and here to hold the track, uh, these track links in place. Um, again, it works great, no problems. Um, I have started using, uh, medium for most of my uh, photo etch except for stuff like this where it's real long and it might have a groove or something and uh, whereupon I use the thin with a long ultra fine uh, tip on it to just kind of suck through there via capillary action. Um, so really that's all there is there. All these other parts fit great. No, Again, no problems. Um, so that shouldn't give you any trouble at all. So then I uh, did the other side as well. Um, all these parts here, I left the lenses off of the lights. I'll be doing those last. I'll, what I'll do is I'll paint those silver. Then I will glue those in place. Um, the, uh, the light guards were a little bit fiddly because they're, they're plastic, but they're really super thin. But again, those went down okay. Just took a little bit of patience. Uh, this strap here for this pipe, um, no problems. Photo etch. Um, now I did notice something weird because it was uh, some of these parts that said to cut off or fill. Uh, like those two holes were there, but that one wasn't on my turret. So I don't know. Uh, but all that went together fine. All this went together fine. There's a lot of clear parts. And what I did is anywhere where there was clear parts, I just uh, hand cut some masks. So once I get all the painting and filters and uh, all that stuff done, I can peel those off and there'll be clear glass. Uh, there's there uh, around the turret and uh, also on the uh, these range finders. These are uh, this whole part is clear. So I just peeled. Uh, I just cut some masks for in there. So I'll have to do is just peel those off. Now down here, we get into uh, the gun. So what I did though, is I assembled all this and I actually installed the gun in the bottom plate before I did all these detail parts. I wanna do those last in case I really had to do any manipulation in gluing these parts together. I didn't wanna break anything small off. Uh, so I did skip this step here did this and the gun first then put all the small parts on um, this is nice because it's a total sub assembly these parts here um, are really nice as you can see here um, the seams a little bit wonky there but overall it's not bad but it's nice because all these parts here, all what I did is I, I glued the whole thing into place first. And then I just went and put a little cement on each one of these individual parts here because this is the DS uh, uh, Dragon Styrene or whatever you call it. And uh, held those in place till they dried. And uh, they all stuck really well. Uh, but it fits really well on the barrel. All that fit together really well. Um, for this particular, uh, for the Magok 2, you have to cut off the muzzle brake and put on this kind of curved muzzle brake. And as you can see, it fit nicely. Just cut it very care, cut the end of the, uh, cut this one off very carefully. I used a fine razor saw on that and just really took my time, make sure I had a good, nice square cut. And uh, really, 
that is it. Um, the only thing I have left to do is to put a base coat um, on the tracks, uh, which will, I'll be using NATO black, and then um, I'll paint all this, uh, the metal portions, I'll be painting that with um, kind of a light, dusty, barely rusty color. And uh, then on these uh, the teeth here, I'll be putting a little bit of metallic uh, on there to show you know where um, the wheels. You know, I made myself some masks, which I can peel off now. Actually, you know, some of it's a little bit off. I was having a really hard time seeing what I was doing because of the lighting I had because I was doing it at another location. But once I do. You know pin washes and all that stuff it should take care of that and there'll be lots of dust and everything else so the total uh armor builders cop out weathering uh drive drive sprockets those turned out fine um for the color i used in this particular instance i looked online and you know it, it, Israeli colors, it's almost, it's just like any other color. You know, it's like people are this and that and the other. This is what you should use. This is what you shouldn't use. Blah, blah, blah. So I found one that seemed pretty good <clears throat> for this time period. Six Day War. Um, one of the recommended uh, colors was a 50-50 mix of XF57 uh, buff and XF60 dark yellow. Which gives you a nice kind of a dusty yellow color. Um, and I like the color. So even if it's not 100% correct, well, I like it. So I'm stoked. So that is done. So I can move on to uh, uh, weathering next. Or actually, I'm going to do a clear coat is going to be uh, the next thing I do. And I'll talk about that in my next video. But I'm going to do a clear coat, um, apply the decals, and then I will start with some... Uh, start weathering the lower hull and stuff like that and the tracks get those applied and then start doing some final weathering type stuff and in this case it's mainly just going to be dust a dusty uh dusty vehicle due to desert conditions or whatever so that is pretty much it for right now on the um idf group build so um, i'm going to call it quits on this video so next time i come back um, we'll talk some more about what's going on and uh, as always I thank you for uh, joining me here on Plastic Models by a Regular Dude and uh, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, hints, tips, critiques, anything like that put them in the comments down below and I'll get back to you as quick as I can so as always thanks for watching and I will see you all later